Hello everyone and welcome back to Ace Attorney Investigations Miles Edgeworth 2, y'all. Th this has got to be coming up to the end of it. We've got to be. It's time to hear Blaze's testimony. I can't even imagine how it's going to be different. W what? What are you going to do? Are you just going to are you just going to give me the run around cuz I I feel like that's where we're at. Don't say such a stupid thing. Blah. Why would you suspect Pops? By the way, we suspect him. <laughs> and I absolutely do. Are you trying to cast suspicion towards the chairman of the PIC? Yes, ma'am, that is what I do. Cast suspicion. I suspect you as well. Do you understand what that means? Status and prestige mean nothing before the truth. Damn, Edgeworth, yo, Edgeworth is in this full force. I am living for it. That man is trying to pin the crime on Kay. The evidence that was in Kay's possession, the ticket stub, the mask, the corsage. These items did not come into her possession out of her own volition. By some method, that man purposely planted them on her personage. Courtney, what do you say about that, though? You've got to know that that's got to be what happened, right? It is hard to believe such a sudden accusation, but I'll ask just in case. Why would he do that? Obviously, to direct suspicion towards Kay. I succeeded in drawing out those words from him earlier. Mr. Chairman, your response? What are you gonna say? You just gonna say that I didn't hear that part when we were in the jail cell together, boy, on our date? Because I did hear it, you did say it. Are you too shocked to speak? And what of it? What? Wait, what is it? What? Perhaps you didn't hear me. I said, what of it? You say that you drew out some words for me, but uh, you don't have a shred of proof, you know? No one else heard it but you. It just doesn't work like that, you see? Or do you have something else? You know, some kind of basis for your argument? This confidence. He also showed it at the cell. He did. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I would like you to explain once more. I trust we have your permission, Mr. Chairman. But of course, I'm pretty interested in this matter myself, you know? Yeah, I bet you are, because <laughs> just accused you. I'd like to know just what part of me seems criminal to Edgeworth. Where do I start? There's no one as honest as I am. See, now you see, if you have to say something like that, then you automatically know that the person ain't it. How can he say that with a straight face? Well, I wouldn't say it's exactly straight, but you know, whatever. Let's start from the top. <laughs> Wait, what? The fact that the auction was held in this room is a cause for suspicion. This is the PIC meeting room. I imagine it would be difficult for non-members to enter. That's why all the members have key cards, you know? I think we can assume that multiple auctions have been held here before. Therefore, suspecting a member of the PIC would be... The best! Uh, yes, because the conductor had to have been a PIC member. Wait! No, no! What? What was that all about? Wait, what do I do, Pops? I just helped the enemy. Ah, oh, you dingus. <laughs> Sebastian really is an idiot, you know? But you see, Edgeworth, I'm not the only one with access, you know? Whoa, what is it? What? <laughs> I fucking beg your pardon? Indeed. There are 11 members in the PIC. Even if we rule out the victim, Miss Crane, there are still 10 potential suspects. It's not me! Oh, right, they're all sitting here. Fuck, I almost forgot. But, 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 but couldn't be the, the, the chairman, right? No, it absolutely could. I don't know who it is, but whoever it is should just come forward. Rabble, rabble, rabble. Well, that, I doubt this is gonna work. Yes, yes, everyone just calm down, you know? Edgeworth, is that all you got? Where's the evidence to suspect me? <laughs> Show me what you got. Well, we got Edgeworth. Do we have it? Oh, so you've fallen silent. But you've gone too far, you see. I won't forgive you anymore. It's too late for regrets, you know. I'm a very important man, you see. Former chief prosecutor and chairman of the PIC. Don't get angry, cramps. You're gonna blow a gasket. <laughs> it's fine if you're not prepared to face the fire, you know. Because, uh, you see... Either way, it won't make any difference. 
What do you mean? Oh my god, it's crazy eyes. Uh-uh. Was it like that before? I don't fucking like it. Because I'm going to bully you. Well, I mean, uh, at least you're admitting it, I guess. All right. You've been rambling on for quite a while about the most trivial details, you know? Yeah. What are you going to do about it? Like the location of the murder, the order of the wounds, and oh, what else was there? What do you mean? Those things are like super important. It just doesn't matter, you know? Because you see, none of that means anything. What, are we getting nihilist over here? Like, what is happening? Are you nihilist Arby's? Think about it, we've got the suspect herself saying she killed the victim. That's all that matters, you see. She'll even get a lighter sentence with her confession, you know? Yeah, but wait a minute. Wait, that was it? Now then, if there's any contradictions, be my guest. How can that be considered a testimony? There must be a contradiction somewhere. I think there might be. Well, we'll just press everything till we find it. That person, he's very important, isn't he? Oh, Mr. Edgeworth, it's all right. Let's just give up. No, babe, we can't do that. Surely, I must have killed her. I can even remember it. Don't be tied down by your muddled memories. If you want to believe in something, Believe in your own innocence. Believe in me, who believes in you. <gasps> oh my god, that's so sweet. But... My opponent is the PRC chairman. Taking him down won't be easy. However, he has underestimated me. If I can take advantage of that. We'll just press everything. He's got to slip up here somewhere. Alright, time to do the butt with you. Can't wait. Been railing on for quite a while about the most trivial details. Whatever, I'm gonna press it off. If these trivial details create contradictions in the case, we cannot call it the truth. That's fine, as long as the rest of the case makes sense, you know? Every case is going to have a small contradiction or two, you see? Listen, but come on. This is a little more than small. But if we get bogged down by the details, we won't be able to arrest the criminal. Trials would go on forever, you see? You of all people should understand, you know? I don't. That's why I'm asking you. Ah, uh, young folks these days. Uh, anyway, you were rambling on about stuff. Stuff. Like the location of the murder, the order of the wounds, and what else was there? Tell me more. The autopsy report and the questions about the conductor. Were you even listening? Yeah, those are all very important things. Talk is cheap, you know. I was listening, you see, but I didn't think much of it, you know. Can you stop saying, you know? You didn't think much of it even after I brought up all those issues? Perhaps your judgment needs to be questioned rather than my ability as a prosecutor. Get him! Fucking drag him, boy! <laughs> That's a good one, Edgeworth. But you see... It just doesn't matter, you know? Because you see, none of that means anything, you know? Okay. How can you say it doesn't matter? Are you trying to suppress the truth? Well, clearly. Well, you see, it simply doesn't matter as much as you say it does, you know? But you see, Edgeworth, you're only saying it matters to avoid the real issue here. What was the real issue? Think about it, we've got the suspect herself saying she killed the victim. <sighs> Think about it. I mean, yeah, but... Uh... Surely we've got something here. It may be true she confessed, that does not make it the truth, however. She is suffering from memory loss, so we must question the credibility of her testimony. That's true, like, can't we get a doctor to confirm that? Objection. Wait, what? That's what you sound like? That's the first time we've heard it. What was that? Objection. You sound like you're half dead. Maybe I gotta change your voice. Well, it's too late now for that, though. Even if you say that, you know it still won't solve anything. What good will it do to deny her confession? It sounds like nonsense to me. Whatever. That just means anybody could come and confess and, like, you know, cover for somebody else. We already had that happen in the last case. Want to try asking her again? I think she'll just say that she's the murderer again, though. Very well. Let's try asking her again one last time. I'd like to hear from Kay herself, whether or not she's the culprit. I get that when someone confesses, it's kind of a big deal, but still, you still need to look into everything. Huh? From me? 
Will that be all right? If this goes poorly, it will be quite unfavorable for you. I do not mind. However, I shall ask Kay the question myself. I'm moved to tears, you know. Oh, how touching, you know, how very touching. Don't, don't talk about touching anything. Fine then, I'll let you ask her. However, I have one condition. If all this proves to be a waste of time, yeah. To be fair, you've been a giant waste of time to me. And I, you don't see me complaining about it, do you? Then that will be the end of it. How's that sound? Uh, the end? Oh, of the hearing? Yes, yes, it seems you can be smart once in a while, Sebastian. In other words, you see, if she confesses again, Kay Faraday will be found, beyond a shadow of a doubt, guilty. Uh-oh. Yep. It's a fine idea. What are we going to do? Guilty beyond a shadow of a doubt? Yeah, that's right. That's harsh. But either way, if I do nothing, she'll be declared guilty anyway. Okay. Yes? I know what I'm asking of you is unreasonable, but please, I want you to answer me. It doesn't matter how tiny it is. Do you... Do you remember anything? Anything that would prove your innocence. Why? Why would you go that far? For me? I... I can't do it. I'm sorry. I I'm too scared to remember. Because... Because I might have done something even worse. If, if that were the case... I would only make things worse for you, Mr. Edgeworth. Kay Faraday must have been a despicable criminal. Uh, someone who betrayed your trust. That's not true. Don't worry. We've only known each other for a short while. But I know you very well. <gasps> the music! Wait, what? What? The pursuit music is here. What's happening? Edgeworth, what are we doing? Do you have a plan? I'd say that I know you better than yourself, now that you've lost your memory. You cannot possibly be the culprit because your true identity is... <gasps> Dude! Give it to her. It's gotta be. The great thief Yatakarasu. The Yatakarasu is a noble thief who would never stoop to murder. Huh? Come on, Kay, remember. No! It's useless! After all... Girl, no, you didn't do that! You just saw them fall! No matter what, that memory still remains. This image that's stuck in my head. I, I just can't get rid of it. That means... I must have... Hold it. Wait, 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 don't say anything else! There's no clear evidence to prove that you're the culprit besides your own confession. Remember what I said? You must believe in yourself. Or perhaps you cannot trust my words? No, that's not it. It's it's because you're trying to save someone like me. You've already lost so much. All for my sake. I, I can't bear it anymore. Please, please just give up. I see now. Maz, you got a plan, do you? Oh my gosh, this is so sweet and sad. I thought it was strange. The reason you were acting like you wanted to be found guilty was because you were concerned about me. Yeah. That is just like you, Kay. It's because you're a good person, Mr. Edgeworth. Unfortunately, I may fall short of your expectations. I'm not trying to be a good person. No matter how much you may want me to give up, I'll keep trying to save you. That is the nature of who I am. Whether or not it is a burden for you is none of my concern. Oh, Edgeworth, a bit harsh, but I get what he's mean. Well, I get what he means. Okay, believe in yourself once more. You are a noble great thief. What you should be doubting is your memory of committing the murder. That is my wish above all else. Please. Edgeworth! Oh my gosh! I... Oh, is she gonna be okay? Oh no. Girl, you're right. Ah. K. 
okay. Is she okay? Did she fall? What is it? Do you remember something? If she remembers something now, <laughs> it'd be like a bad movie. Shut up. Ain't nobody asked you. Bull. Did she just say bullshit? Because that would be funny. What, what, girl, what does that mean? B bull? What are you talking about, honey? Prosecutor Edgeworth, please ask her to clarify. Uh, w well, Kay, what do you mean by bull? I remember now. The person in the red raincoat had that with her. The, the, the cow. The little cow plushie. The stuffed bull doll. I'm certain of it. Is that- Is that true, defendant? Yes, your honor. The court hereby accepts the defendant's statement as a new piece of testimony. Objection. Whoa, okay, you need to stop- you need a- you need a fucking little- little breath spray or something, a little throat spray in there? Quit messing around, Courtney, a testimony like that cannot be accepted, you know? Your objection has been noted, sir, however, testimony about the victim's belongings is Courtney on our side right now? Has been lacking up until now. Objection. Nevertheless, you know, her vague memories cannot be trusted, you know? Her memories are vague. Well, that would be bad for us as well. Didn't you say this earlier yourself, Mr. Chairman? Courtney? What are you doing? Since we have the suspect's confession, we don't need to worry about the trivial details. If we decide to doubt her memories, then we must also doubt her confession, which is the main foundation of our case. Courtney! Are you willing to do that, sir? Oh, you're right. Well, never mind then. I shall leave it to you. Thank you very much. What, Courtney? Did she... Did she just save our ass? We did it. It was touch and go for a while there, though. However, those words of Judge Courtney just now- I know! What does it mean? What are you doing? It almost feels as if she's on our side. Girl, what happened? Prosecutor Edgeworth, do you know anything about this stuffed animal? I do, actually. The stuffed animal Kay spoke of must have been this. We found it in the storeroom. It is believed to be one of the items for auction. Oh my god. Wait, what? I gotta... What, what's happening? This is... Uh, do you know something about it, Justine? Y no. It's just a bit different from what I imagined. Indeed. It's certainly not what I would have expected the victim to be carrying. Let's examine every suspicious looking... We're examining the bull, okay. Um, okay. What, what could be... Something right here, what is this? A cherry blossom petal is stuck in its soft fur. Speaking of which, there was also some stuck on the red raincoat. A cherry tree. Wasn't there one blooming on the viewing platform? Yes. Seems safe to assume this was taken outside. Okay, so there's some proof. However, why would the victim be carrying something like this? I don't know. Here's the- here's the ear hole where the horn should be. The left horn is missing. Hmm. There's a hole in this stuffed animal. Seems this hole is where the horn is inserted into. Oh. <laughs> Say nothing. I guess his head isn't stuffed with cotton. I wonder what's inside. Perhaps I should examine the other side. Okay. Well, it's so cute, isn't it? It is a little bit cute, to be fair. Okay, this? The right horn seems to be fine, but the entire balance feels a bit off. This horn... It looks like you can move it. What? It comes off as well, does it? Wait, what? What the hell? What's happening? What was that buzzing sound? It seems this toy is equipped with a recording device. Oh. My. God. And... The... I knew who you were right away. You can't hide that burn from me. What the? Silence, huh? I've been waiting for my chance to get revenge all this time. Ah! 
What the... What? This is just coming up now? Is this the moment of the murder? Who could have recorded something like that? Oh, shit. Stuffed animal records audio. Someone is talking to another person. It's recorded. One of them has a burn mark. A burn mark? Oh, Jesus. This is... There ain't no doubt about it. This here was what I heard. We cannot verify when these voices were recorded. It's also possible that they aren't related to the case at all. If only we had some video as well. That's hogwash! I'm telling you that right there was the conversation that I heard. The victim was holding on to it, right? Well, I reckon it must have been recorded when she got attacked. That certainly is a possibility. However, your testimony alone is insufficient. I require something with a little more credibility. Well, well, it was the first time for everything. No, I'm just kidding. Again, her words almost sound as if she's trying to give me advice. Judge Courtney, there's no mistake that those voices were from the incident. Please recall the audio that was recorded by the stuffed animal. I knew who you were right away. You can't hide that burn from me. If we compare this part of the recording with a certain piece of evidence, we can prove it. Can we? Do we have what we need? This evidence shows that the recording took place during the moment of the crime. Uh-oh, um... This evidence... What would it be? What would it be? The letter? Not really. It, it, it has to do something with... It has to do something with the burn, I'm assuming. What do we have that might show that? Um... Does the autopsy report say anything? <gasps> There's a burn mark on the victim's hand! Take that! That's it. The autopsy report? And exactly what part of the autopsy report shows that- Uh-oh, the music didn't stop. Was it supposed to? Did I fuck up? This part shows the recording took place during the moment of the crime. What? Oh. Do I have to put- What? Do I have to put it on the- The- The word maybe? Burn mark on victim's hand maybe? That. Try that. Is that what we had to do? I remember clearly what that voice said. You can't hide that burn from me. On the victim's hand, there was a burn mark. Indeed. It just happened to match up, you see. But what of it? According to Kay's testimony, the victim had been holding the stuffed animal. And it just happened to record a characteristic of the victim. Namely, the burn. That's just a coincidence, I mean. Well, it could happen, right? No? What are you talking about, dude? I do not think so. It is hard to believe that all of this is simply coincidence. Thank you. The voices on the stuffed animal were most likely recorded during the incident, so she agrees now. One of these voices must belong to the true culprit. From what we've heard, it must have been the one who was doing most of the talking. Well, but what's the point? In the end, we still can't tell their gender identity, you know? Indeed, because they had been using voice changes. Can't be helped. What do we do now, then, about it? It seems the situation has become quite clear. The conversation Miss Hart overheard was between the culprit and Miss Crane. That's what I've been telling y'all from the start. And from this, we will understand a new fact. Please enlighten us, then. I trust you have no objections, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, you're kind of quiet over there. Did you die? <laughs> do what you want. According to Miss Hart's testimony, just before the incident, Two people came up from the auction hall using the lift. It must have been the conductor and one of the auction guests. They probably went there to settle the payment after winning a bid. And then, it was there that the crime was carried out. Okay, that, I mean, that makes sense. Since the auction continued after the crime took place, we are led to a single truth. This is the new fact that we have arrived at. The culprit is the conductor, the culprit is Jill Crane, the victim was the conductor. No, the culprit has to be the conductor. The, the, it went on. Jill's the one that was killed. It has to be. The culprit is the conductor. It must be. Since the conductor was the only one who could keep the auction going, we can conclude that the deceased victim could not have been the conductor. Uh, Justine? Please be quiet here. Okay? 
works. Yeah, you tell your son. Except he's not your son. If the conductor was not the victim, then they must have been the culprit. Please wait. That alone is insufficient. Of course. Even I do not intend to rely upon the process of elimination. You ain't saying much over there, boy. What's happening? You mad over there? Certain traces left at the crime scene led me to believe that the culprit is the conductor. Well then, please show it to us. Oh shit, girl, you ready? Here, okay, unzip it. Worth its time. Wait, what? What were the traces left at the crime scene that led me to deduce the culprit is the conductor? What are the traces left at the crime scene? Um... What are the traces left at the con... What are the traces left at the crime scene? This! The pool of blood was found in the meeting room was it left behind to hide the storm's existence. Okay, just think about it. This has to be it, right? It was left in the meeting room to... Uh, uh, only the... Mm, I, I hope I'm right about this. Oh no. The culprit purposely left a large amount of blood in the meeting room to throw him off the scent. In doing so, we were led to believe the meeting room had been the scene of the crime. It was a ruse by the true culprit to hide the blood that had fallen from the storeroom. So we wouldn't find out about the existence of the black market auction, correct? Indeed. If the culprit had been unrelated to the auction, there would have been no need to do such a thing. Ergo, the culprit could only have been the conductor. Well then, do you have any idea as to who the conductor might possibly be? Do we? I mean, we have, like, I have a theory, but I don't think that's what she's asking me. The auction hall is at the PIC meeting room, and furthermore, there is a storeroom above it. Courtney, I swear to fuck if it's you, I'm not gonna get over it. You can't turn around and try to be my friend now and then be it. I don't think it's her, though. The conductor must have been, at the very least, a member of the PIC. I really think it's you. I really do. So, in other words, you suspect me, I take it? Is it natural to suspect you, the one with the most authority in the PIC? Objection. Damn, your voice. What? I don't like it. Man, you make Von Karma seem like fucking opera singer. You are quite capable, I'll give you that much at least. But you know, like I said before, you're far too naive. In what way, sir? You have nothing, you know? There's no evidence that proves I'm the culprit, you see. I- honestly? I kind of think that he's right about that. I don't think we have anything definitive right now. If by some chance you do have evidence, then why don't you present it? Ugh, we don't have it, do we, Miles? We don't. that That's him telling me that we don't. Do I have evidence that Blaze is the culprit? I don't think that we do. So does that mean this is not over? It's not over. I don't have it. Blaze himself has suggested that he is the criminal. He's been showing that strange self-confidence for a while. He knows that there is not a single piece of evidence left behind to incriminate him, which is why he's being so cocky about it. <laughs> if you play with fire, you're gonna get burned, Edgeworth. Just kidding, I always wanted to say that, though. Listen. Well then, Courtney. What's she doing? What, hello? I, I, I reckon I'll just remember something too. What? You also lost your memory? Nah, that ain't it. Something just popped into my head right now. Very well, please tell us. Objection. You're not gonna handle it, are you? He's not gonna accept it, of course. Courtney, could you tell me what you're doing? Prosecutor Edgeworth will not give up until we have destroyed every last possibility. I'm destroying every possibility so that he will never oppose us again. Is that really what you're doing, babe, or is that a ruse? Can't tell. She's got- she's got such a fucking poker face on her. I can't tell. Uh, Justina, I, I don't really know what's going on, but well said. Pops, I'm gonna help too. After all, he's the one who's wrong. Fine then, let's hear what she has to say. What do you have to say, darling? Well then, Miss Hart, please proceed. <laughs> sure thing. Well, just leave it to me. Oh. Da -da -boo 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 -boo. <laughs> yeah, j just the fucking skip I needed. Just. <laughs> Such a... God, the whiplash. Please make sure you only tell the truth. 
Uh, ain't that a matter of course? Well, I'm a bona fide journalist, bona fide, bona fide, it doesn't matter, both are right. Journalist of the justice, you know? Uh, somehow I feel uneasy. Me too. Y'all saying the culprit was the conductor, right? Well, that means the victim was a customer. Now here's where it gets a mite strange. You see, there were 11 people at the auction. When the auction continued after the incident, well, I went straight on over and snuck a peek down below. You don't mean, how could you have forgotten that? What the fuck? That's exactly what I mean. All 11 people were still there, present and accounted for. What? Okay, that's important. Are you sure about that? Sure, I'm sure. I saw it with my own two eyes. Uh, so it started with 11 people and there were still 11 people after the murder? Was it a ghost? You know, Sebastian, normally a prosecutor would call that a contradiction, you know? Where there are really no changes in the auction at all. Well, really? Well, I'm telling you, the auction just went on like normal. Uh, but there was one itty bitty thing, though. What was it? Well, you know them hammers that you always see at the auction? L like the one that lady's using over there. An auction gavel, perhaps? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, like that, like the judge. All of a sudden, I couldn't hear the sound no more. Well, it had been like banging away just prior to it. The sound of the gavel. Does that have anything to do with the case? A lot of testimony about the secret auction, okay? Okay. If Miss Hart's testimony is the truth, then this matter has taken a grave turn. If the victim was neither the conductor nor a customer, the very foundation of Prosecutor Edgeworth's reasoning would collapse. <laughs> Justice prevails, as they say. I hope you've learned your lesson, Mr. Edgeworth. Shut the fuck up. Mr. Edgeworth? There really is nothing we can do. It's not over yet. Some mysteries still remain. I can't give up. I have to think. If I don't, then Kay will be- Did you get the answer you wanted this time? Well then, a deal's a deal. Who's holding it? Why are we holding it? What's this? Hello? Justine? Please wait, Mr. Chairman. I be- Oh, sorry. I believe it is still too early to make a judgment. Sorry, I clicked there a little too quickly. There are still a few mysteries left in this case. Justine! I really can't fucking tell if she's helping me! Until we have solved them all, we cannot call this a complete victory. What's she doing? Isn't that right, Prosecutor Edgeworth? I was expecting you to shout. She's calling me Prosecutor Edgeworth still. Hold it, like you always do. You getting a crush on me, girl? I mean, I'm here for it. Yes, of course. Once again, Judge Courtney has come to my aid. Well, then what is it? What sort of mysteries are left? Well, of course, there's the contradiction in the autopsy report. Oh, that kind of thing. Hello? Hi. I brought her in. She was, oh, the doctor, of course. We still have to hear from her. What's wrong? Why, why were we suddenly called here? Did someone suddenly get sick? I'll begin preparing compress. Stat, uh, ow! What'd you call me here for? Did something happen? Oh, they're here, God. Dr. Young, Miss Jensen, you have my gratitude for taking the trouble to come here. This won't take long, so please relax. Tell me what in blazes is going on. <laughs> of course. We called you here because something came up. Judge Courtney, just what are you planning? I don't know. Bonnie Young, under the divine rule of law, please answer truthfully. There were no mistakes in your autopsy report, correct? Granny would never make a mistake. That's certainly strange. Huh? What's strange? This court has found an error in Dr. Young's autopsy report. Dr. Young, please tell the truth. Did you falsify the autopsy report? That's terrible! How can you accuse her of that? I have no idea what you're talking about. Why would I do such a thing in the first place? 
To protect the true culprit, of course. What you talking about? I would never do such a thing. How strange. In that case, why would there be an error in the autopsy report, I wonder? Prosecutor Edgeworth. What do you think? Why is she asking me? Oh? I expected you to press into her statement like you normally do. Why is she taking control of the situation and trying to help me? I don't know what her goal is, but I must play along. I think we're gonna do that in the next one. I bet you now we're gonna have testimony from Bonnie and Karen. Okay, so in the next one we'll get that testimony and see what it reveals. And then hopefully we'll be closer to the truth? Well, for fuck's sake, I hope so. Goodness me, I can't believe this isn't over, but this is crazy. Gosh, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. Gosh, and I'll see you soon in the next one. Toodaloo.